These next set of videos are going to take a look at applications of first and second order differential equations. This is where we can actually use our strategies to solve differential equations to model real world situations, usually in the world of physics, occasionally in other sciences as well. We're going to start today with answering the question of how do we model population growth. And the first type of population growth that we're going to deal with is where it's proportional growth. And you've actually seen proportional growth before this differential equation all the way back as far as Math 99. You just didn't know you were actually looking at this differential equation. If it turns out that the birth rate and death rate of a population is proportional to the population. And that seems to make sense that the the more people there are, the more people that will be born, and the more people that will die. It's proportional. If you've got a population of just 10, there's not going to be as many births and deaths as if you had a population of a million. So it makes sense to say that they're proportional. And the way we show that that is proportional is we say that the change in the population with respect to time is equal to the birth rate minus the death rate times the population. In other words, the difference between the birth rate and the death rate is going to be the change in the population. And that's what proportional means. We multiply this constant times the population. Now, usually we're going to summarize this birth minus death constant into just one constant. So you'll see something like dp dt is equal to a constant times our population. Well, this is a separable differential equation. We can solve it by dividing both sides by p and multiplying both sides by dt. And then we can integrate it to get that the natural log of p is equal to a constant times t plus our integration constant. And if we exponentiate both sides, we get that the population is equal to e to the kt times e to the c, which is just another constant. Well, we can solve for that constant c by saying at time 0, the population is some initial population, which means our equation then becomes p naught is equal to c times e to the 0, which is 1. So I know then that the initial population is that constant. And so we end up with this final formula for our population growth. The population is equal to the initial population times e to the kt. And what's interesting about that is we've seen it before. That is continuous exponential growth. We saw it in finance with continuous growth on your investment, where our final investment was equal to the initial investment times e to the interest rate times time, where the interest rate was that constant. It also works for population growth as well. Now we can alter this situation slightly. Let's say instead of saying the birth and death rate or the growth rate is proportional to the population, Rather than a direct proportion, let's say that the population growth is actually proportional to the square of the population. How does that change things? Well, now the change in the population with respect to time is equal to a constant, that's what proportional means, a constant times 
the square of the population. So this gives us a slightly different but still separable differential equation in order to solve. We can multiply both sides by p to the negative 2 and by dt. We can integrate both sides to get p to the negative 1. The negative of that equals k times t plus our integration constant. Distributing that negative 1 through to the other side, multiplying both sides by negative 1, we get negative kt uh, plus, technically it's a different constant, but it's still a constant. So we can take the reciprocal of both sides to get 1 over negative kt plus our constant. We just have to solve for that integrating constant, which again we can do because we'll assume at time 0 we've got some initial population. Well, that means the initial population is 1 over negative kt becomes 0, c. And so we can solve for c by taking the reciprocal of both sides. So this gives us our population equation is 1 over negative kt plus 1 over the initial population. Now we're going to clean this up a bit because we normally don't like to have those little fractions in there. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the initial population to get that the final population equation is the initial population divided by negative k times t times the initial population plus 1. Now we have an equation for the population at any time. Now that we've taken a look at some basic population growth models, I want to take a look at what is called logistic growth. Logistic growth is going to behave a little bit different than the other population growths we've seen because the idea is a population can't grow forever. Eventually, it has to start leveling off because of a limitation of resources or because uh, the death rate overtakes the birth rate. They're both changing. So we end up with this thing called logistic growth. And this probably models population growth better than any of the models we've seen before. The idea is often birth rate is a linear decreasing function of the population. In other words, the birth rate is equal to some initial birth rate minus, we'll call it B1, it's the slope of the birth rate times the population. The idea here, and you see it sometimes in population models, when a population is small, they tend to reproduce at a higher rate versus when a population is larger because of limited resources they're going to reproduce at a smaller rate and so we end up with this linear decreasing function of the population yet the death rate is constant infant mortality is pretty constant we'll call it delta naught for the death rate. Infant mortality is constant. Average life expectancy is constant. The death rate is constant. So what we end up with then is that the change in the population with respect to time, which we know is the birth rate minus the death rate times the population, ends up being the birth rate is now beta naught minus beta 1 times the population minus the death rate, which is delta naught times the population. Well, if we make some new variables, let's call a beta naught minus delta naught, the constants, and we're going to call b, uh, let's call that beta 1, the part that's multiplied by the p, 
then this equation becomes dp dt is equal to a minus bp times p. And just to put this in the form that you often see in the logistic equation, we're going to factor out the b. And when we factor out the b, we get t dp dt is equal to b times a over b minus p times p. I'm going to make another substitution here to make life easier. I'm going to say b is equal to my constant. And a over b, we're going to simplify just to equal m. That way, we don't have to write a over b over and over again. And so we end up with dp dt is equal to a constant times m minus p times p. And I'm going to actually put that p out front. This equation is what is called the logistic equation. And it's probably the most accurate equation we have to model population growth, whether it's population of a species, an animals, fish, even bacteria or viruses. It turns out this logistic equation, logistic growth, is a very great model to represent that. So let's solve it to see if we can make an equation for how the population grows over time. As we do, we're going to get 1 over p times m minus p, moving the population to the dp side, equals k dt. In order to integrate the left side, you'll see that we need to use partial fractions. Partial fractions are going to be a real helpful trick in this section. We need to figure out something, I'll call it x over p, plus something else, I'll call it y over m minus p, is equal to that original fraction so that it can become much easier to integrate. So as we solve, we have x times m minus p plus y times p equals 1. If I let p equals 0, I've got mx equals 1, so that x is 1 over m. If I let p equal m, then the first part goes to 0, and I've got my equals 1, so y is equal to 1 over m as well. So now that first fraction becomes x, which we said was 1 over m over p, plus y, which we said was 1 over m over m minus p, equals k dt. And I forgot the dp on there. We're still trying to integrate, but I'm going to hold off on integrating one more time just to make the algebra a little nicer. I'm going to multiply both sides by m. That's going to clear out those little fractions. And so we're actually integrating 1 over p plus 1 over m minus p dp equals the integral of mk dt. OK, so that'll give us the natural log of p plus the natural log of m minus p divided by negative 1 equals mkt plus a constant. OK, let's keep cleaning this up. We get the natural log of p divided by m minus p is equal to our mkt plus a constant. Get rid of the natural log by exponentiating both sides. Gives us p over m minus p is equal to e to the mkt times e to the c, which is just another constant. Um, let's solve for that constant right now. Let's use the point zero initial population. So we've got the initial population over m minus the initial population 
is equal to constant times e to the 0, which is 1. So now I can write this as m, I'm sorry, p over m minus p is equal to the constant, which is p naught over m minus p naught times e to the m k t. All right. Still trying to solve for our population p. Let's clear the fraction by multiplying both sides by m minus p so that the population is equal to, we're going to distribute through p naught m e to the m k t over m minus p naught minus p times p naught e to the m k t over m minus p naught. Now let's get all the p's on one side by adding it to the other side. p plus p times p naught e to the m k t over m minus p naught is equal to p naught m e to the m k t all over m minus p naught. We're almost there. Factor out a p, and we get 1 plus p naught e to the m k t over m minus p naught is equal to p naught m e to the m k t all over m minus p naught. Finally, we've got a p alone that we can solve for by just dividing both sides. But before we do, I'm going to get a common denominator. So we have p times. Our common denominator is m minus p naught. And we get that by multiplying by m minus p naught plus p naught e to the m k t equals p naught m e to the m k t over m minus p naught. Okay, this is going to get really nice for us there. One nice thing we can do is we can multiply both sides by the denominator, and that's going to go away. So we really just have to divide by that ugly thing in front of p. And so we get our final population is p naught m e to the m k t all over m minus p naught plus p naught e to the m k t. And we're actually going to clean this up just a little bit. We're going to clear out that e to the m k t by multiplying e to the negative m k t on top and bottom. And we'll have to distribute that through. And when we do, we're just going to have p naught m in the numerator over the m minus p naught. I'm going to group that together times e to the negative m k t plus, and then the e's will divide out, leaving behind just p naught. And we have just taken the time to derive this thing which is the population of the logistic growth. This formula models population growth over time. And where it becomes interesting is if we take this equation and we took the limit as time goes to infinity on this equation of p. If we do that, time's going to get huge, which means we've got e to a negative huge number. e to a negative huge number is 0, and 0 times anything is 0. So all of that part's going to go away, which will leave behind just p naught m over p naught, which reduces down to just m. What that means is as time goes to infinity, 
the population of this culture is going to approach M. M is the maximum capacity of the population. And we're often very interested in what M is when we're talking about modeling a certain population of a community. One reason is, for example, if we're tracing a virus and a virus's growth and impact in a country, a state, or even the world, that virus's growth will appear exponential at first, but eventually it will level off the maximum capacity of that virus. So the question we always are interested in as we track a virus is what is M, that maximum capacity? Because a virus population will start out exponential and then it's going to hit an inflection point where it starts to level off then and will flatten out at that maximum capacity. And actually, that'll happen regardless of where we put the starting point. If we start here in the middle, it'll just start going up towards that maximum capacity and level out. Another thing that's interesting is if the population for some reason starts out above that maximum capacity, then it's in an environment where it cannot survive at its high rate, and it will actually start to level off to that maximum capacity of the population. Asymptotically, no matter what, the population will be approaching that maximum capacity. All right, this video did a lot of derivations of population growth models. The reason for that is the assignment today is going to ask you to derive various population growth equations. Sometimes it'll give you some numbers, which might be a little easier to work with. Sometimes you have to work with the constants to manipulate it to the correct form. So you need to practice with both of these as we're modeling population growth today, and then tomorrow we'll move on to a different model. Good luck.